After 12 days of daily summits in five countries on the Pacific Rim, Donald Trump prepared to head home on Tuesday leaving behind a region largely relieved that the U.S. president did not escalate existing relations but still confused about his administration's policies in Asia. Trump has said he will deliver his own verdict on the trip in what he promised would be a major statement on North Korea and trade, the headline themes of the trip. From past experience that is likely to be an upbeat assessment. Several times along the road he described his reception as unprecedented and claimed that big progress had been made on trade deals, though he gave no details. In the region, the general reaction appears to be that the tour had gone better than expected, but in some cases that was set against very low expectations. In South Korea, for example, there were fears that Trump's spat with Kim Jong-un could result in a flare-up in hostilities while he was in the region. That did not happen. The U.S. president did have one Twitter flare-up after he left the Korean peninsula lashing out at Kim Jong-un who he said had insulted him by calling him old when I would never call him short and fat Donald Trump and the Vietnamese president, Tran Dai Quang, at the presidential palace in Hanoi on 12 November. Photograph Luang Thai Linh Hoff BGT images however, he did conclude his tweet on a more soothing note, claiming I try so hard to be his friend, and maybe someday that will happen on his visits to Japan and South Korea, where the challenge of containing North Korea was the focus of summit meetings, his tone was on the whole more measured and resolute than expected. In South Korea, where officials had worried about the lack of chemistry between President Moon Jae-in and Trump's previous threats to tear up a bilateral trade deal and make Seoul pay for U.S.-made missile defense systems, his speech about the strength of the bilateral relationship to the national parliament went down particularly well. The National Assembly speech was a surprise. It was really well received, said Sumi Terry, the senior fellow for Korea chair at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. It showed Trump valued the alliance and he showed he knew the history. The Koreans bought it. Donald Trump speaks in Manila, Philippines. Photograph Andrew Hornick Terry also said the Seoul government also welcomed the fact that Trump made no further threats of unilateral strikes against North Korea and appeared to point towards the possibility of some form of diplomatic off-ramp from the current military buildup and mutual threats. From the point of view of regional security and shoring up Pacific alliances against both North Korea and Chinese expansionism in the South China Sea, many observers said the trip had gone relatively well. In general it went as scripted, said Patrick Cronin, a senior director of the ASEAN Pacific Security Program at the Center for New American Security. It was concentrated in Northeast Asia on a pressure strategy on North Korea. It was meant to build off our alliances and partnerships and in all cases, the leaders who met with President Trump who are our allies and partners came away with more positive feelings than not. The overall title of the administration's strategy is a free and open Indo-Pacific, and to that end, the term marked the revival of the Quad, an association of the U.S., Japan, India and Australia. Senior officials from the four countries met on the sidelines of the Manila summit, for the first time in a decade. However, it is unclear how this grouping would act as a counterweight to China's rising power in the region, and how it squared with Trump's America First trade strategy, based on walking away from the multilateral Trans-Pacific Partnership, which was supposed to be an economic bulwark against Beijing's power, and Trump's insistence on renegotiating trade relationships with allies in Asia, to benefit the U.S. Thousands of Filipinos protested in Manila as Donald Trump attended meetings as part of his 12-day trip. Photograph Jess Asner JT images if the administration's central goal here was to reaffirm American commitment and remove concerns about the future of U.S. leadership in the region, I don't think they significantly moved the needle in terms of alleviating anxiety in the region, said Eli Ratner, a China expert at the Council on Foreign Relations. The contradictions between the America First agenda and a strategy predicated on U.S. leadership in the region have not been resolved. And without an affirmative U.S. trade and investment strategy, it's unclear how they will be. That's clearly the Achilles heel here.